Hi guys, Brand here, and welcome to another commentary. Today, I want to talk about why a lot of new perks end up being as like busted and as annoying as they are, because a lot of people have been talking lately about, you know, the whole hyper focus thing and how that's been super obnoxious and super annoying and has too much synergy and all this wonderful stuff. And I think one of the interesting thoughts that I saw that came up with this was like, why do they keep messing this up? Why do they keep doing this? Why do they keep putting out really broken things all the freaking time? And why does it seem that they never learn? And I'm going to put on my little tinfoil hat today and tell you that it, it's probably on purpose. And we're going to talk about why it's probably on purpose that they keep releasing these really strong broken combinations. So a lot of people kind of like err on the side of the fact that like, well, they just probably didn't play test enough. Uh, they probably just didn't see this combination coming. And to that, I say incorrect, because that's what the whole point of the PTB is. That's we play the PTB, we test out the perks and they see that stuff. They see somebody bringing hyper focus with the toolbox with prove thyself doing it like the videos of people doing gens in like 30 something seconds were out during the PTB. That didn't come out after the perk was released. That came out during the PTB and they did not adjust that. They did not change it. They did not see it as a problem. They just don't. They just don't. And here's the here's the deal. Here, we're gonna bring it down to brass tacks here. We're gonna bring it down to just, to just brutal honesty. We're gonna get this out here and get everything on the table. These perks come out in DLC. Downloadable content you have to pay for. It. These things are not base kit, they do not come with the game. You have to pay extra to have access to these perks by buying the Resident Evil chapter, or at least using your Oryx cells, paying through Oryx cells to get Rebecca specifically, to get hyper focused. So you're, you're spending some sort of money. At some point, you were spending money in order to obtain that perk. Now, think of, I think it's something that we only think about, especially when we get in like DVD in our heads, because we're only thinking about DVD from like the perspective of, you know, us who play it all the time. We're just thinking about the realm of the game and the health of the game. We're not, we're not thinking about the fact that this is a video game that people are, that, that, that behavior is trying to sell to people. And the, the, the bottom dollar, the bottom dollar, the bottom line is if something sucks, it's not going to sell as well. That's just kind of like the, the, the awful truth. I'm sure you, you found that out through other um, other uh, DLCs. Like I would say, like if, if Trickster and Yunjin and the all kill chapter didn't have like the K-pop aesthetic to it, the K-pop partnership, uh, that chapter probably wouldn't have done well because not a lot of good perks came out of that. Not a lot of good perks came out of that. Unjins were mostly useless, and so were uh, so were uh, tricksters until people found out that Star Trek works well with Nurse. And then, like other than that, like if you didn't play Nurse, that was kind of just an, an L again, right? Like well, who's going to use Hex Crowd Control, right? Like it's just not that great of a perk. And it is just so like that goes into the factor of like trying to like sell a DLC. It's like how much am I able to use the abilities? and the perks that come out of this chapter in order to you know win my games what are the things that i'm going to be purchasing be useful to me am i going to be able to use the things i paid for to win and if the answer is no the unfortunate fact is a lot of people are going to not gravitate as much to buy those things to to buy those chapters so i think the the hard and unfortunate answer is that they gotta make stuff broken sometimes in order to appeal people to come buy it and that and that just sucks and that's something that i learned uh back when i played uh like training card games i remember playing Yu-Gi-Oh pretty intensely at one point in my life i only went to like two tournaments and i was never any good but that was a thing that konami would do konami had a cycle of they would release really really strong new meta where it would be like a whole new type of summoning or something like that and it was like super good and super busted. And, and those things would immediately rise to the top of tournaments. If you weren't using that new you know, that new archetype, that new deck archetype or those new cards, you would be losing. Your old decks would mostly get beat out and those people would rise to the top of the tournaments. So you kind of had to, you know, you know, get with it or get left behind. So you had to go in and buy all those new cards, which made Konami money. And they were very happy about that. But what usually ended up happening, which is why I ended up actually quitting Ego, by the way, is that they would go back and ban a lot of the cards. Like after after like a bunch of tournaments had happened, after the deck had been out for a while, after they had made their sales, they go back and ban a lot of the cards. They, they add a bunch of stuff to the ban list. So it, all this stuff that you already spent money on, you couldn't even like win with anymore. You couldn't even use it. 
So, like, but they had gotten their money, so it really didn't matter, and the cycle just kept going and going and going. It just kept happening over and over and over, and I just kind of, like, got tired of shelling out money for stuff that literally became useless at a certain point. <laughs> so, I feel like this isn't, like, this is, like, 1,000% not a DVD thing. This is just, like, a gaming world thing in general, is if you're trying to sell new content to people in your game and it has any sort of competitive aspect to it, making that stuff inherently good makes it more likely to be sold, even if you end up nerfing that thing later. So it's better to release something that's broken and make a lot of money and then nerf it afterwards than have something come out that's fair that may not attract people to buy your extra content. Yeah, it's a little bit of a dark side, isn't it? That's kind of spooky. But why do you think that behavior doesn't seem to get their perks right? I think that's something like a little bit more sinister in terms of just like greed and money making. But do you have a different idea? Let me know down in the comments below. But that's gonna be it for today's videos, friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow, but if I don't, See ya when I see ya.